As someone who's been on the internet for so long, I'm surprised I only heard of Hell of a Boss, and by extension, Has Been Hotel, semi-recently. Like, I started watching maybe a month ago, and sure, it's not perfect, but I still found it extremely charming with its animation, character designs, and music, and I quickly caught up to the latest episodes. But a few of these episodes show off just how strong some of these characters are, from intense fight scenes to genuinely impressive levels of power. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you'd know that power scaling gets my tootsies rolling. Although this isn't a proper ranking video like I've done in the past, I'll be mentioning different groups or individual characters in the order that I feel like they belong in. Before I get into the ones that matter, I can safely say that most residents of Hell and Earth are just normal people or fodder used for higher kill counts, whether they're imps, hellhounds, humans, etc. There's the occasional outlier, like this dude knocking out Millie with a bottle when she's capable of things like this. But most of these outliers are played for laughs. Luckily for the sake of this video, the levels of Hell's caste system generally correlates to how powerful they are. Of course, there's many high-ranking demons who have been alluded to or mentioned who we haven't seen on screen. And despite there being a solid amount of violence, we don't see exactly what each character is capable of, and many on the later end of this list are only implied to be powerful. With that being said, we can start with the characters who we see plenty of. Our story follows IMP, short for Immediate Murder Professionals. As the name implies, they're pretty good at killing people. All of them are solid fighters and proficient with weapons, whether it be guns, axes, crossbows, you name it. They all also have pretty cartoonish durability and consistently react to bullets after being fired. Why do I hate you? I'd say Moxie's the weakest here, although he specializes in guns and definitely has some solid showings like spinning Striker around with his lasso. He's not nearly as physically capable as the others are, usually being portrayed as weak or at least weaker than everyone else. Luna's probably around this level, lacking Moxie's gun skills but making up for it by being bigger and stronger. She also has the ability to track scents from names on a paper, so that can come in handy. Millie's likely above the both of them, zooming around murdering dorks and sharks with absolutely no issue, possibly having the fastest combat speed of the bunch. She also takes on a giant catfish single-handedly to save a drunk Moxie. I love that woman. Oh, she totally pegs you, doesn't she? I don't think it's a hot take to say Blitz is the strongest of the group, him being the boss and all, and tying with Stryker in the Harvest Moon Festival challenges. He also consistently holds his own in fights better than the others, like when he kills multiple crew members in the split second that the lights go out. Going back to Stryker, Daryl Dixon over here is probably the strongest individual in this tier, easily taking on Moxie and Millie on two separate occasions, and momentarily gains the upper hand against Moxie and Blitz. He himself also states that he and Blitz are stronger than most of their kind, which must be true since he's hired to kill Stolas, who we'll get into in a bit. You know, the two of us are superior than most of our kind. He would have killed Moxie and Millie in their second round had his luck been a little bit better, but he still quickly gets away after surviving a statue falling on top of him. Oh, fuck. Other Hellborn or sinners with impressive showings are around this level too, like Fizzaroli, whose replica was comparable to Blitz. Hasman Hotel introduces two Sinner Demons, Angel Dust and Cherry Bomb. Both are able to take on hordes of enemies with guns and explosives. Angel Dust is given another decent feat in the prequel comic where he kills multiple mobsters who are already aiming guns at him before they can react. Everyone I've mentioned so far will be street tier, putting them around non-superpowered characters like Batman or Black Widow. A few steps above them are the Overlords. Overlords in Hell are Sinner Demons who rank higher than the ones I've mentioned because of the power they possess. We've only seen a handful so far, but the ones we've seen seem to represent media from certain time periods. Fox represents TV, Valentino represents adult films, Velvet represents social media, and Alistair represents the radio. I'll talk about him more later since he seems to be particularly powerful. Like I said, not much has been seen of these guys, but it's safe to assume that they're stronger than most of their peers since they rule sections of hell due to their sheer power and influence, as opposed to others who have high status only because they're born into it. We see Angel Dust, a character who I already mentioned to be a strong fighter, respect and obey Valentino out of fear, and it's safe to assume that the others are relative in power. Vox also seems to be a rival of Alistair's, but I assume it's more of a social rivalry rather than a power one, with TVs replacing radios and all that. Next up we have the Goetia family. In real life, the Ars Goetia is a book originally written back in the 17th century, then later compiled with other spooky shit in 1906 by Samuel McGregor. It lists 72 demons, all with armies and abilities and how to summon them, including familiar names like Stolas. 
but in the world of Hell of a Boss, the Goetia is a family seemingly all fathered by King Payman. Oh, that's an ugly noise, son. Here, how about you cease this bitch crying? They're all born into royalty, but they are powerful. When they reach a certain age, they're given a purpose in life along with a grimoire containing all kinds of spells. Stolas is able to effortlessly create portals to space of many different sizes. He also has telekinesis, necromancy, and the ability to possess other people. His grimoire also allows him to read prophecies in the stars. His most deadly attack is his eye thingy that turns people into stone Medusa style. He's shown to have an alternate bird form which he uses to scare the dorks and dodge a few of Stryker's bullets. Most importantly, he can only be killed with angelic weapons, and they can also dampen his powers. There seems to be some inconsistency with what may or may not hurt him. Stolas claims that his and Blitz's fun time involves dangerous weapons, but he's beaten up by Stryker pretty badly. We don't see what the other Goisha are able to do, but it's fair to assume that they have similar powers aside from what they each learn from their grimoire. The group that we see the least of just so happens to consist of the strongest beings in Hell. I'm talking about the Seven Deadly Sins. Although there have been a few different iterations, Hell of a Boss follows Peter Binsfield's list of the Seven Deadly Sins and their associated demons. Lucifer is associated with Pride, Mammon with Greed, Asmodeus with Lust, Leviathan with Envy, Beelzebub with Gluttony, Satan with Wrath, and Belphegor with Sloth. Each one is worshipped as a celebrity and rules the Ring of Hell their sin is tied to. The only ones we see in full are Asmodeus and Beelzebub. Asmodeus is huge and can conjure up illusions with fire as we see while he sings to Stolis. Also, it's not super relevant here, but I absolutely love his voice. In the house of Osmodeus, come on, sing us a song! Beelzebub is able to fly, create cotton candy, has telekinesis, and can increase the size of both food and herself. Change from pretty petite to close in size to Osmodeus. Like I said, we haven't seen most of these characters, but it's safe to assume that Leviathan, Mammon, and Belphegor are relative to them. And although we haven't seen him, I think Satan is one of the stronger beings in Hell, and one of the stronger Seven Deadly Sins. He's consistently referred to in the way that we refer to God, and he rules over the Wrath Ring which is full of tough imps like Millie and her family. King Payman and Alistair are most likely around or just below the power level of the Seven Deadly Sins. Payman is the father of the Goetia and holds each grimoire until his kids are ready for them. In his introduction, we see him take on multiple forms in just a few seconds. He can see through mirrors, and summon destructive teleportation beams to travel anywhere he wants. Being a Goetia, he's capable of all the base powers that I mentioned earlier, but I'd imagine that he has the combined abilities of each of his children since he gave them each of their grimoires. As for Alistair, he's only been in has -Been Hotel's pilot episode and a prequel comic, and he's already shown off the most impressive on-screen feats. Faggy says he's one of the most powerful beings in Hell, coming down and immediately destroying all of the previous overlords and broadcasted it, taking the moniker of the Radio Demon. The Radio Demon, one of the most powerful beings Hell has ever seen? Eh, not big on politics. He can teleport himself and teleport others even if they aren't anywhere around. His best feat is casually summoning black tendrils out of the ground to destroy a weaponized blimp. There's also the possibility that he has straight up reality manipulation, if his song was real and not just an artistic choice. He's pretty confident that he'd be able to hurt those in the hotel, including Charlie, who's Lucifer's daughter. <laughs> if I wanted to hurt anyone here, I would have done so already. Speaking of Charlie, she and her mom Lilith rank second in Hell's hierarchy. Lilith has absolutely no screen time other than a family picture on the wall. Again, not much is shown, but we see that Charlie's able to spawn flames and shoot fireworks from her hands. While singing, she subtly transforms a few times, growing horns and sharp teeth, so she most likely has a much more intimidating demon form. She does get into a little tussle with a reporter, but considering her mild-mannered personality, she surely wasn't going all out trying to kill her. And of course, that only leaves Lucifer Morningstar, the ruler of not only the Pride Ring, but all of Hell. And in a world where most people are powerful and violent, you've got to have something that puts you above everyone else. Don't worry, I picked up one thing from my dad. You don't take shit from other demons. Even other overlords in the Pride Ring don't mess with him. The creators mention that he and his daughter are capable of growing wings to fly, which we have yet to see, and he has angelic powers since he's a fallen angel. All in all, Hell of Boss is full of many diverse characters in design, personality, and powers, and I can't wait to see how they're expanded upon in the upcoming episodes of Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel, where I'm sure everyone I've mentioned will get more screen time and feats and new powerful characters will be introduced too. Thanks for watching today's video, huge thanks to Something in the World for the thumbnail, their Twitter is in the description, so go check them out. I am a new fan of the series, so I'm sorry if I missed anything or got anything wrong, so feel free to add anything you have down in the comments. 
Right now I'm scripting next week's video and it should be out relatively soon. And uh, Twitter and description, as per usual, and I'll see you guys later.